Mga posibleng tanong na maaaring lumabas ngayong darating na Philippine Nursing Licensure Examination ang alay ko sa inyo for today. 15. Board exam type of questions with rationalization that will cover your maternal and child nursing. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos once a week. Don't miss that out. Subscribe now. Hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help me know that you like to see more content like this. With that for their do nurses let's, let's jump into the video hi everyone wherever you are right now whatever time zone you're watching me right now just wish you good morning good afternoon and good night just in case i don't get to see you isang panibagong nursing test backing video nga ang alay ko sa inyo for this week oo nagbabalik tayo kasi alam ko na nalalapit na yung board exam natin dyan sa ang pinas ngayon kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung other videos uh, uh, that i created under your nursing test banking i'll be putting the playlist link on the description box or simply click the second button kapag nagpop out yun check that out because I'll be also putting there some of the uh, playlists I have under nursing educational videos. Nako, bago tayo mag-proceed sa video na to, gusto ko lang kayo pasalamatan kasi nga, palam, parami na tayo ng parami, palago na tayo ng palago. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagsuporta at sa pag, patuloy na pag-share nyo ng videos ko. I really, really do appreciate. Ngayon, um, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung previous video na in-upload in ko last week, panoorin mo yon. I believe I actually created a video under your nursing theory. Yeah, nursing theory. Panoorin mo yon. I'll be putting the link um, of that video on the description box. Check that out. Now, if there's one thing that I want you to take away every time I do a nursing test ba uh, banking video, that is the rationalization. Why? Because I really want you to have the full grasp on the, on the rationalization so that on the actual day of the board exam, kahit pa ikutin ka sa klase ng tanong, you know exactly why is that the right answer. Kaya naman, hindi ko na patatagalin pa. Medyo mahaba itong video na to. Let me switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Welcome back to our formal discussion, you guys. Ito nga ang ating another entry for this week. Nursing test banking uh, playlist natin um, under maternal and child and nursing. Now, let this be your nursing study guide. May singit ko lang kung di mo pa napapanood yung other nursing test banking videos na kira eight natin. I'll be putting the link on the of that actual playlist on the description box or whenever the icon button pops out, check the one out. That's all for you. Now, without further ado, nurses, let's proceed. Now, let me share to you our objectives for today. We only have two objectives whenever we do nursing test banking video. The first one I will be providing or I'm going to provide and discuss board exam type of questions. And the second one is I am going to provide your rationalization for each board exam type of questions. All right. So let me share to you the instructions for today's um, examination. So you will be given 15 board exam type of questions. I'll be reading the questions and the choices for you. You have five seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question or after each question with rationalization. Choose the letter of the correct answer, nurses. Good luck. Handa na ba kayo? Hinga hinga para sa unang tanong ngayong araw na ito. Board exam type of question number one. Nurse Bella explains to a 28-year-old pregnant woman undergoing a non-stress test that the test is a way of evaluating the condition of the fetus by comparing the fetal heart rate with. So the tanong, the tanong, the question really here, let me give you a highlighter. Tinatanong ka, what is a non-stress test? How are you going to educate your patient in, in a layman's term about non-stress tests? Is it A, fetal lie? So, uh, comparing the fetal heart with comparison ng non-stress test definition. Comparison siya between fetal heart rate and fetal lie. B, fetal movement. C, maternal blood pressure. D, maternal u uterine contractions. Your five seconds starts now.
Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good. Sino nakatama? Fetal movement. Here's the rationalization. Non-stress test measures response of the fetal heart rate. E, ah, yung ating FHR to the fetal movement. With fetal movement, FHR increased by 15 beats and remain for 15 seconds, then decrease to average rate. No increase means poor oxygenation perfusion to fetus. Nakuha yon, nakuha. Board exam type of question number two. During a two-hour childbirth focusing on labor and delivery process of primi gravida or primi gravida, the nurse describes the second maneuver that the fetus goes through during labor progress when the head is presenting part as which of the following so ang tanong dito you guys is your six cardinal movements of labor naalala niyo pa ba yon dito sa tanong na to um re-reviewin natin siya so what is the um choices for this um uh for this question is it a flexion is it b internal rotation c descent d external rotation ang tanong second maneuver that the fetus goes through during labor progress. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Letter A. Very good. Flexion. So the six cardinal movements of labor are descent, flexion, internal rotation, extension, external rotation, and expulsion, respectively. That is the six cardinal movement of labor. Yung paggalaw ng fetus, pa-descend, pa-expel out of the uh, uterus. Okay? So, proceed na tayo. Board exam type of question number three. Mrs. Jovel Diaz went to the hospital to have her serum blood test for alpha fetoprotein. The question is about alpha fetoprotein. So the nurse informed her about the result of the elevation of serum AFP. Excuse me, may misipun pa. The patient asked her what was the test for? So what is the indic the question really here is what is the indication of your alpha fetoprotein? Bakit siya ginagawa sa mga buntis? Is it A, a congenital adrenal hyperplasia? Is it B, PKU, C, Down syndrome, or D, neural tube defects? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. Letter D, to check for neural tube defects such as your spina bifida. All right, so alpha fetoprotein is a substance produced by the fetal liver that is present in amniotic fluid and maternal serum. The level is abnormally high in maternal serum if the fetus has an open spinal or abdominal defect because the open defect allows more AFP to appear. Hence, the answer is letter D. Board exam type of question number four. Fetal heart rate can be auscultated with a fetoscope as early as. So, tinatanong ka, ilang weeks mo pwedeng ma-auscultate o marinig yung fetal heart rate ni baby sa chan ni mami using fetoscope? Ilang weeks? Is it A, five weeks of gestation? Is it B, ten weeks of gestation? Is it C, fifteen weeks of gestation? Or D, twenty weeks of gestation? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. Nakakarami na ba kayo ng tamang sagot bago ko i-reveal ang answer dito sa question number four? Pakilagay po yung mga score nyo sa baba. I would like to evaluate the scores of my students. Okay, so i-reveal na natin to. What is the answer to this one? It's letter D. Very good, you guys. 20 weeks of gestation nga po ang tamang sagot. Now, FHR can be auscultated with a fetoscope at about 20 weeks of gestation. FHR is usually auscultated at the midline suprapubic region with a Doppler ultrasound at 10 to 12 weeks of gestation. FHR cannot be heard any earlier than 10 weeks of gestation. Hence, the answer is letter D. Proceed na tayo, board exam type of question number 5. Mrs. Bendivine states that she is experiencing aching, swollen leg veins. So, anong presenting signs and symptoms ni Mrs. Uh, Bendivine? 
Excuse me. Ano? Aching swollen leg veins. So, itong sitwasyon. Sitwasyon? <laughs> sitwasyon? Ba't mungo ba ako? So, itong sitwasyon natin, nurses, the nurse would explain that this is most probably the result of which of the following. Binigyan ka ng, kadalasan sa tanong, bibigyan ka ng clinical um, signs and symptoms. Clinical, yeah. Clinical manifestations. You are going to Um, you are going to give your diagnosis based on the presenting signs and symptoms of your patient. So, kapag meron kang aching swollen be- uh, leg veins sa pasyente mong buntis, ano yun? Or actually, sa question, hindi sinabi kung buntis siya. Basta aching swollen leg veins, that's the presenting signs and symptoms. Medyo vague. So, mamimili ka dito sa apat. Is it A, thrombophlebitis? Is it B, uh, PIH? Is it C, pressure on blood vessels from enlarging uterus? Or D, the force of gravity pulling down on the uterus? Your five seconds starts now. All right. So, what is the answer to this question, you guys? The answer is letter C. Sino mga nakatama dyan? Pressure on blood vessels from the enlarging uterus. So, Uh, pressure of the growing uterus on blood vessels results in an increased risk for venous stasis in the lower extremities. Subsequent edema and varicose vein formation may occur. The answer is letter C. Board exam type of question number six na nga po tayo. Mrs. Ella Santoros is a 25-year-old primi gravida who has a rheumatic heart disease lesion. Her pregnancy has just been diagnosed. Her heart disease has not caused her to limit physical activity in the past. Her cardiac disease and functional capacity classification is... The question, nurses, masyadong, ano, masyadong complicated itong tanong na ito. Pero tinatanong ka dito, anong cardiac disease and functional capacity classification ng pasyente mo base sa sitwasyon na binigay sa'yo? Sabi, meron daw... Car- rheumatic heart disease ang yung pasyente. And then, yung pregnancy niya has just been diagnosed. Yung heart disease nitong si Ella Santoros um, is not causing her any limitation on her d- activities of daily living. So, anong classification ng cardiac disease and functional capacity ito? Is it A, class 1? Is it B, class 2? Is it C, class 3? Or D, class 4? Your 5 seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good. Letter A. Nako, kung hindi kayo familiar sa classification of cardiovascular diseases, ito ay bibigay ko sa inyo. Pakinggan nyo mabuti yung rationalization, ha? Bakit letter A ang sagot? Clients under class 1 has no physical activity limitation. There is a slight limitation of physical activity in class 2. Ordinary activity causes fatigue, palpitation, dyspnea, or angina. Or angina. Class 3 is moderate limitation of physical activity. Less than an ordinary activity causes fatigue. Unable to carry on any activity without experiencing discomfort is under class 4. So that is the classes. We just gave, I just gave you a brief overview about the classification of your cardiovascular diseases. Diba? Ang saya. Eto na tayo. Nakuha nyo na yon. Nakuha. Board exam type of question number 7. The client asks the nurse, When will this soft spot at the top of the head of my baby will close? Nako, bagong panganak si baby. Yung bumbunan niya, yun yung tanong. Kailan to magsasara? So, the nurse should instruct the mother that the neonate's anterior fontanel. Anterior fontanel will normally close by what age? So, kailan da? Ang tanong lang naman ito, binigyan ka ng sitwasyon. Kailan nagko-close ang anterior fontanel ng isang neonate? That's the question. Is it A, 2 to 3 months, B, 6 to 8 months, C, 10 to 12 months, or D, 12 to 18 months? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Nako, kabisadong-kabisado niya sa mga masteral ang MCN laban. Mga pediatric nursing, eto na tayo. The answer to this, very good, 12 to 18 months. Anterior fontanel closes at 12 to 18 months, while posterior fontanel closes at birth until 2 months, period. Nakuha yon. Nakuha. Board exam type of question number 
Eight, when a mother bleeds and the uterus is relaxed, soft, and non-tender, you can account the cause too. So, binigyan ka na naman ng clinical presentation. Kapag daw, ang uterus ni mami ay nakarelax at nagbibleed. Siyempre, walang muscle contraction, magbibleed yan. Soft and non-tender. Ano ito? Is it A, atony of the uterus? Is it B, presence of uterine, uh, uterine scar? Excuse me. C, laceration of the birth canal? Or D, presence of uh, retained placenta fragments? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. Now, before ko i-reveal yung um, ating sagot dito sa tanong, question number 8 natin, please utilize the visuals that I'm using that I have here for you because you can actually use that as a uh, as your reviewer, lalong-lalo na dun sa mga visual learners natin, okay? I didn't just put it there just for the heck of putting it, but actually, I put that in there for, eh, with a purpose. Taray, di ba? <laughs> so, ayun na siya. So, basahin mo siya, pag-aralan mo, kasi makakatulong yan sa'yo para mas lalo mo siyang maalala. Okay. Anyway, highway. Proceed na tayo. Ang sagot dito, you guys, is letter A. Very good. Atony of the uterus. Uterine, uh, uterine atony or relaxation. Yun na nga, oh. Uterus is relaxed. Kadalasan sa board exam, yung mga tanong dyan, bibigyan ka nila ng mga, y- mga clue. Na, yung sagot, minsan nasa tanong na. So, you just have to underline, master the, the, the skill of underlining and taking down those key terms, those keywords that can help you uh, arrive to the right answer. Sinabi dito, uterus is relaxed. So, ano yon Uterine atony or relaxation of your uterus. Now, this is most common frequent cause of postpartal hemorrhage or, uh, yeah, Hemorrhage. It is the inability to maintain the uterus in contracted state. Period. Nakakarami na ba kayo ng tamang sagot? Ngongo pa rin ako. Ito na tayo. Board exam top of question number 9. Mrs. Pichi Gonzalez, LMP, or Gonzalez's LMP, or last menstrual period, began April 4, 2010. Her EED, EED, sorry, her EDD or expected date of delivery should be which of the following? Nako, computation ito, nurses. Naalala pa ba yung LMP and EDD? Ito na. So, what is the answer when you are given this uh, values? Is it A, February 11, 2011? Is it B, January 11, 2011? I'm sorry, typographical error yan. Um, C, December 12, 2020? Ah, 2010 or D, November 14, 2010. So, tinatanong ka, ano ang EED mo kapag ang LMP mo is April 4, 2010? Your five seconds starts now. Tari na pangalan, Pichi Gonzalez. Yes. Okay, the answer, nurses, sabay-sabay, letter B, January 11, 2011. Using Nagel's rule. Naalala pa si Nagels? Yun. He used this formula. Tandaan, ha? Minus 3 calendar months plus 7 days. Very good. Board exam type of question number 10. Which of the following prenatal laboratory test values would the nurse consider as significant? Ito, itong apat na ito, mga laboratory lab, va- mga laboratory, mga lab values sa isang pasyenteng buntis. During prenatal visit. Alin dito ang significant yan, uh, you guys? Is it a hematoc rate of 33.5%? Significant in a way na which is the one thing that is abnormal? Is it BWBC count of 8,000 uh, cubic millimeter? Is it C rubella titer less than 1 is to 8? Is it D one hour glucose challenge test of 110, uh, 110 grams per deciliter? Your 5 seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Anako, ang galing naman. The answer is letter C. Rubella tighter less than 1 is to 8. Bakit ito ang maling sagot o ang significant maling sagot? Ang tamang sagot. So, rubella tighter less than 1 point, uh, one is to 8 nga po ang tamang sagot. A rubella tighter should be 1 is to 8 or greater. 
That is why it is significant. Now, bakit? Thus, a finding of a titer less than 1 is to 8 is significant, indicating that the client may not possess us immunity to rubella. Hematocrit of 33.5%, WBC of 8,000 cubic millimeter, and an hour glucose challenge test of 110 grams per deciliter are within normal parameters. Okay? Alright. So, nakakarami na tayo ng tamang sagot. Last five questions na nga tayo for this video, you guys. Make this one count. And whatever your score is, just put it on the comment section. Wag mahihiya. Pinaghirapan mo yan. No shame. Again, the main goal, the main purpose of this um, video is for you to have the full grasp and review yourself, refresh yourself when it comes to the rationalization. Alright? So, board exam type of question number 11. Aling Patricia is a patient with preeclampsia. Concept ng preeclampsia. You advise her about her condition. Which would you tell or which, yeah, which would tell you that she has not really understood your instructions? So, anong, anong klaseng tanong tong negative question? Negative statement. Hahanap ka dito sa mga, pag nakakita ka ng ganyang klaseng tanong, kasi which would tell you that she has not, the not here makes this, whole question negative. Really understood. Meaning, hindi niya naintindihan yung health teaching mo about sa preeclampsia. That is the question. Is it A, I will restrict my fat in my diet. B, I will limit my activities and rest more frequently throughout the day. Is it C, I will avoid salty foods in my diet. Or D, I will come more regularly for checkup. Your five seconds starts now. Negative answer, huh? Negative statement, I mean. Time's up, you guys. Very good. Ang galing naman. Letter B. I will limit my activities and rest more frequently throughout the day. Why? Pregnant women with preeclampsia should be in a complete bed rest. When body is in recumbent position, sodium tends to be excreted at a faster rate. It is the best method of aiding increased excretion of sodium and encouraging diuresis. Rest should always be in a lateral recumbent position to avoid uterine pressure on the vena cava and prevent supine hypotension. Ang A, I will restrict my fat in my diet, is per, is correct. Ang C, because you don't want the patient to gain weight. Ang C is correct. Why? I will avoid salty foods in my diet. Why? Because salt holds more water. Salt attracts water, which means that could put the patient in high risk for developing more hyper, oh, more hypertension, but hypertension. Pre-eclampsia nga eh, oh. Eclampsia, increased blood pressure or hypo hypertension in pregnant uh, women. I will come more regularly for checkup. This is correct because kailangan ng compliance sa mga pasyente yung merong preeclampsia. Kaya ang sagot is letter B. Board exam type of question number 12. What? Mrs. Grace. Evangelista, siya ang nanay ni Hart Evangelista Charing, is admitted with severe preeclampsia. Nako, concept na naman ng preeclampsia. What type of room should the nurse select this patient? ba? Minsan yung mga tanong nakakagigil, pero wala, ako, ewan ko ba. Pero ano rin daw, si Mrs. Grace ay admitted for uh, with severe preeclampsia. Kung ikaw ang nurse na naka-assign kay Mrs. Grace, anong klase ng room ang ibibigay mo sa kanya? O, oh, itong choices mo. Is it A, a room next to the elevator? Is it B, the room farthest from the nursing station? Is it C, the quietest room on the floor? Or D, the labor suite? So, wag, ma wag kayong tatawa sa mga tanong na to kasi itong mga tanong na to, kinuha ko siya sa mga previous board exam natin sa Pilipinas. So, ito yung mga tanong na lumabas noong mga nakaraan at posibleng lumabas sa mga darating, ang ngayong darating na board exam. So, medyo nakakatawa siya. Medyo funny, but this is the reality, you guys. Itinatanong talaga nila minsan yung sentido ko mo ng mga nurses natin. Okay? Anyways, I will give you 5 seconds and it starts now. Alright, sinong nakatama dito? Sige nga, subukan natin. Letter C. Very good. The quietest room on the floor. Nandun ba si J-Lo? Hindi ko alam. Charing. A loud noise such as a crying baby or a drop tray of equipment may be sufficient to trigger seizure. Initiating eclampsia. A woman with severe preeclampsia should be admitted to a private room so she can rest as 
undisturbed as possible. Darken the room if possible because bright light can trigger seizures. Seizures nga po, seizures, pre seizure precaution. Okay, so that is the answer. Letter C. Last three questions on the board exam time for question number 13. Mm -mm. Wait lang. Okay, ito na. Basahin ko na. During a prenatal checkup, the nurse explains to a client who is RH negative that RH gram, yeah, RH o gram will be given. Kailan binibigay ang RH o gram sa mga buntis? Nako, RH factor sensitization um, concept ito. Is it a uh, weekly during the eighth month because this is her third pregnancy? Nako, sinabi bang third pregnancy? <laughs> Saya. Wag mag assume. Is it be during the second trimester if the amniocentesis indicates a problem? Is it C to her infant immediately after delivery if the Combs test is positive? Or is it D within 72 hours after delivery if the infant is found to be RH positive? All right, your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good, nurses. 72 hours after delivery, if infant is found to be RH positive, letter D. So, ROGAM or RHOGAM is given to RH negative mothers within 72 hours after birth of RH positive baby to prevent development of antibodies in the maternal blood stream. Now, which will be Theta to succeeding RH positive offspring. Hence, the answer is letter D. Last two questions. Board exam type of question number 14. A baby boy was born at 8.50 p.m. So at 8.55 p.m., the heart rate was 99 beats per minute. Now, she has a weak cry, irregular respiration, she was moving all extremities and only her hands and feet were still slightly blue. The nurse should enter the APGAR score as. Ano ang APGAR, uh, APGAR score mo sa, sa baby boy na ito? Kapag ang heart rate niya is 99 beats per minute, we cry irregular respiration, moving extremities and only her hands and feet were still slightly blue skin color. Ano ang up, APGAR score mo? Naalala pa si APGAR? O oh, naman, naalala pa yan. So, ito yung choices. Is it A5, B6, 7, uh, C7, or D8? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. Kailan tayo nag APGAR scoring? Oh, refresh natin. nag APGAR scoring tayo paglabas na pagkalabas ni baby. Okay, bago pagkatapos natin mag, mag neonatal care. Okay, pagputok ng paano bigyan ni mami, lumabas na sa, sa vajayj ni mami si baby. Nililinis mo na, neonatal, nasa neonatal care ka na. Upgar score na tayo. Okay, sino yung mga nagjujuti sa delivery room dyan? Ako, master na master nila ito. So, the answer to this one is letter B. Six nga po ang APGAR score ng baby ito, si baby boy. Heart rate of 99 beats per minute, that's negative one. Weak cry, that's negative one. Irregular respiration, negative one. Moving all extremities, negative two. Extremities are slightly blue, negative one. With a total score of six. Yun siya. Alright, so nandito, meron ako dito, ang tawag dito, um, uh, mumunting picture dito para ma-refresh ka about the APGAR scoring at kung ano-ano ba yung mga criteria na yun. So, reviewin mo yan. Take a screenshot now. Last, ano uh, na tayo ha? Last questions. Pero bago yun, kung hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe sa Facebook page ko, mag-subscribe ka na, follow mo na kasi nagpo-post din po ako doon. And I would love you guys to actually put on your comments. Let me know what you guys think and how we can improve and grow our community. So, maraming maraming salamat ka po ulit sa lahat ng mga nag-share ng aking videos. Nakikita ko po kayo, na-appreciate ko kayo. Um, and I love you guys so much. Uh, ito na tayo. Last question for this video. Board exam type of question number 15. Now, Billy is a four-year-old boy who has an IQ level of or IQ score of 140, which means kapag ang baby boy, which is four-year-old Billy, 
have an IQ score of 140. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ano significant clinical significant nun? Is it A average normal? Is it B very superior? Is it C above average or D genius? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up. Nako, make this last question count. The answer is letter D. Genius. Kaya nilagay ko dyan si Pare mong Einstein. Yehey, ang saya. Alright, so bakit genius si, B si Baby Billy? Now, ang IQ level is equals to mental age over chronological age times 100. That is your formula. Again, that's IQ is equals to mental age over chronological age times 100. Mental age refers to the typical intelligence level found for people. At a give chronological age, OQ of, uh, or EQ of 140 and above is considered genius. So, si Einstein, ano siya? 160. Kaya naman siya ay isang genius. Itong Presente itong picture na to. Basahin mo yan kasi malaking tulong yan sa iyo. Alright, you guys. Thank you so much nga po sa panonood. And uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. I would also like to evaluate the scores of my students. Put your scores on the comment section. No shame, no shame. Pinaghirapan mo yan. Abangan nyo nga po yung next video upload natin. After 7 days, which is going to be next week, same time, same channel, tulungan nyo na nga po ako, ipamalitan nyo na sa Radyong Sira, ang pinakabago, pinaka-fresh, at ang pinakalibling nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again next time. Have a good one. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. I hope you learned something. Have a big one my channel. You are already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team cool talk. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. You put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out other playlists I created for you. I'll be putting the links on the description box. So simply click the second button right here let's connect follow me on all my other social media accounts everything is at neil gave except for my tiktok account which is neil gave official and see you again next week you have a good one